Ah, the sky is so nice tonight, but I'm going to spend it inside. <laughs> In today's video, all I'm going to be doing is having a look inside of the CV2800s down there, just purely to find out a little bit more info about the fans. I'm just going to take the top one off, assuming it has the same fan, take the grill off it, look inside, see what sort of room we got to work with, because I'm still uh, about to do a fan swap on the bottom CV2800 there because the stock fans in these amplifiers are ridiculously loud. So I'm sort of just looking at how much room I have to work with because a 24 volt fan, um, I can't seem to find any super quiet ones, whereas 12 volt, can, uh, sorry, 12 volt fans I can, but I'll need some sort of step down thing to make it work. So I just want to see if I've got actually room inside of the enclosure uh, to, you know, stick that step down module. So I'm just hoping now I should just be able to pull this amplifier out. Mm, apparently not. All right, so I've just figured out why I can't actually remove this amplifier. It's because when I screwed the amplifier in, I screwed the Behringer EQ in, I sat it on top and screwed it in like that. So what's happening here is I am flush with the back of this Behringer EQ. So I'm gonna to have to unscrew that as well to be able to pull the CV900 out. All right, so I now have the Behringer unhooked or unscrewed from my rack here. I'm actually gonna remove this high and low bass sticker as well, purely because they're no longer mix match subs in here. They are sitting on the exact same equalizer settings, both the top and the bottom. Okay, so the CV900 is now out of the box or out of my amp rack and is sitting on the floor just here. Let's take the top cover of it and have a look inside. Alright, so here we currently are on the ground right now looking down at the CV900 amplifier and I've unscrewed this thing entirely and I apologize if that last scene was a little bit long because it, there were so many screws and they take so long to get out and then you got to remove all these ones on the top as well. So that's it for the CV900. I have postponed lifting the grill for the longest period of time now whilst I set up my camera rig. So let's see what's inside. I'm going to look and show it to you first. And now I'm gonna look in. Okay, so it's actually fairly bare inside. In all seriousness, I thought it would have been a little bit beefier than this, uh, the 900 that is. And so this, this right here that you're looking at is a CV900 by So and Vega. Um, this thing's discharged for months now. I haven't, well, probably a month. So I feel okay looking inside of it from a head view or like, you know, having a look inside. So we have what looks like a heat sink there, a reasonably small one, not sure what that's actually for. I can't actually see what's underneath that. Um, but there's a heat sink there, just a little one. And on the right here, we have our main output transistors here, uh, along with the big heat sink here, which is also where on the same side that the fan is on. So the fan sucking the air from this front part here of the grill through this heat sink here and blowing it out the back here. So this right here is the culprit uh, for being extremely noisy and a pain to listen to. So you can see right here, we've got two pretty big capacitors right here, which I'm guessing, and I'm just assuming this, and I am now that I've pulled this one apart, I may as well do a CV2800 for you guys as well. So I'll do that after this one. This is just the 900, as I said before, the 2800s are class H, this is a class AB, I believe. This is just my memory too, by the way. Um, so we'll be able to see what's the difference inside. So we've got a giant big transformer here, which is very, very nicely sized. Um, it's probably bigger than the one that was inside of my uh, Phonic Max 2500, which is rated at 1500 watts. So 600 watts more than this thing. Uh, definitely a bigger, transport, uh, <laughs> bigger output transformer here uh, in this one, much thicker wires. I don't really want to touch anything just to purely avoid anything going wrong. But again, I'm going to assume, again, just assuming uh, these uh, capacitors we have here is going to be the same um, but with another board on this side like we have on here with another heat sink here another fan and another set of capacitors like we have here on the CV2800 but uh, I guess time will tell when I have a look inside of that uh, shortly but you now I'm just gonna grab my camera down uh, take some photos or and some videos some close-ups of components and things um, but 
in all seriousness, the CV900 is pretty bare inside. Uh, again, this is only a 900 watts RMS rated amplifier at four ohms bridged. Um, so nothing too crazy. Uh, like all Sun Vega amplifiers I've tested here, which is just the CV900 and CV2800, these amplifiers are highly unrated, un underrated. Sorry, my apologies for that. Uh, these, this amplifier that's rated at 900 watts was able to get a set of 1200 watt subs warm purely with clean power. So no clipping on the front here. Or at least it didn't say it was clipping. Uh, I, I haven't tested it if it's actually clean or not. But uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it inside of this amplifier. We've got the really stupidly noisy fan just here, uh, which I will take a look at closer on the CV2800. So here's your look inside the CV900 here. I'll bring the camera down and get some close-up shots for you, and then we'll move over to the 2800. So here we are now with the CV2800 and I'm yet to look inside of this one as well. So just like with the CV900, you're getting my original first opinions or uh, first look inside, although the CV900 I'd never seen inside of. This one I have, I will admit to Googling it, but I don't think I actually found one that was 100% like, you know, I haven't found one and gone, okay, that's a CV2800. So again, all right, opening it up to you. And now putting the cover down and oh God, oh my goodness. Okay, I can really, really see now why these CV2800s pushed so much power like they did. That's ridiculous. I really don't know if the camera's doing that justice, but I thought there would be, you know, two more of these on this side, but there's four. There are four of these huge, massive capacitors. Uh, what brand are they? They are... Jamacon, if anyone is wondering, capacitors, they are huge, they are. I cannot read the, the 80 volt, 1000 or 10,000. I can't read, it's, it, it's too dark in there. But anyway, wow, looking inside this amplifier, this is absolutely ridiculous. We have one, two, three, four, five, six output chips per side there also are some smaller ones down there which might be a pre-amplifier of some description not 100 percent sure just yet or on that one but inside wow i can see why these things weigh an absolute ton i believe this amplifier is somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 something kilo uh which i don't know what that is in pounds but i, I can really see where the weight is we've got two huge heat sinks here that are very solid feeling Again, we just have masses and masses of components on these circuit boards. Like I expected, dual heat sinks, dual circuit boards. The transformer, right? Picture that right there, just have a look. That is the size of my hand. My hand measures eight inches from there to there. That transformer is eight inches wide and looks to be about as, as tall as it can be in a two unit space uh, amplifier. If I sound like I'm fanboying, <laughs> I am. These are actually really, really impressive. Now, now for the main thing that I was actually pulling these things apart for as well, the fuses are in there. Um, if you were to blow a fuse, that's I'd say where you'd replace them from. Let me just quickly check my camera and the framing is correct. Yes, it is. So again, we have the two huge fans here that are the massive culprits. So they run a line to just there and just there. So these two little plugs here at the top here are the fan plugs, um, which are 12 volts, unfortunately, uh, sorry, 24 volts, unfortunately. So 12 volt fans aren't gonna work super well with it. However, I'm sure I can just dangle a 12, to, a 24 to 12 volt step up module somewhere. But then again, there's so much exposed uh, wiring. I really don't wanna do that. So this has sort of 
done exactly what I wanted this test to do for me. It has somewhat talked me out of wanting to do a step up module um, in, inside here. I'm just actually gonna remove, oh actually how do I remove this fan? Cause there actually isn't a screw on the end. Let me just have a quick closer look at this and I will be back in a second. Okay, so in answer to what type of screws these are, they're just like your generic push pins in your car where you just pull that middle section there out and then you can just pull them out with your fingers. But anyway, if you can see here, I'm actually running power to it now purely because I have unplugged one of the fans. I'm actually gonna unplug the second one. Uh, now being careful that I don't touch anything because it has got power running to it. So I just wanna make sure, switch it on. You hear everything boot up and it is dead silent. So what I've done now is grabbed a multimeter, which I'll just quickly grab. And uh, what I'm going to test now is the voltage the fan outputs are pushing. Now this is DC, so I'm going to put this at 20 volt DC on here and touch both of the pins inside of the amplifier here in which you are not gonna be able to probably read the results, but I am. So let's just read what we are reading here. Okay, so the current output voltage at the moment is 15 volts to the fans. So with 15 volts to the fans, I'm not gonna be able to run so the main concept or my main idea here looking inside of these if I haven't actually said it already is I'm replacing these Gemicon fans because they are absolutely terrible, stupidly loud, really distracting and absolutely just <laughs> not enjoyable to have uh, when listening to movies and watching, sorry, listening to music and watching movies. It's distracting how loud these fans are. As you'll be able to hear just quickly, I'll just plug this fan here back into the board. you can hear how loud that fan is. So the main aim here is to cut down on that fan noise and uh, try and get some quiet as fans as possibly, sorry, get as quiet a fans as I possibly can. I'm just gonna switch this back off just in case anything's heating up here and it shouldn't be. But trying to get as quiet a fans as I possibly can, but they need to be 24 volts because 12 volts output here will most likely blow the fans because these fans are 24 volts and this is a variable output as far as voltage, so it's probably idling here at 15 volts, and uh, as the amplifier heats up, it probably steps up to 18, and steps up and keeps going until it reaches 24 volts when the amplifier is, you know, pushing four ohms bridged uh, for a significant amount of time. So there's my issue there. I have to find some sort of 24 volt fan that is super quiet. Uh, again, these I think I believe are 48 dBA. I found some that are 34, but I, I know that there are computer fans out there and things like that and 80 mil 12 volt fans that are in the tw below 20, like 19 um, dBA, which is ridiculously quiet and that's what I'm trying to chase after. So I'm gonna have to keep looking for some 12 volt uh, computer fans that are 80 mil that are super quiet. If I cannot find them, I will have to get a step down module. So anyway, I'm gonna pop these back inside of the CV2800 now grab some shots for you uh, of the insides here so we can have a look at the components nice and close. Grab some photos, grab some video, and uh, then I'll put the cover back on and put everything back to normal and uh, that'll pretty much be it for this video. So hope you guys have enjoyed so far. Uh, let me just pack this up now and uh, get you some nice inside shots.
All right, so there it is. A look inside of the CV900 and CV2800. If you guys have enjoyed this video, let me know with a thumbs up on the video down there. Subscribe to my channel down there if you haven't already. And uh, if you've enjoyed this video, let me know in the comment section down below if you are impressed or not with these amplifiers. With that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video and I hope you have enjoyed.